Hello my soccer universe, what a quarterfinal it was for the second legs. Not everywhere, but there was one city where emotions ran high uh, throughout it. The city of course is Madrid, where it was absolute madness. And how perfect it was. You have uh, two Champions League games against, the, uh, against two very, very good teams. The finalists from last year in the same city within two days. If you're a fan in, in, in Madrid, you must have been very, very happy. Although, one side is definitely happier than the other one. So, yeah, uh, we had, well, um, it was very similar um, onsets in many ways of how uh, the games go. You know, uh, there were on Tuesday and Wednesday, it's always uh, two team, uh, one team that had a two-goal lead. Uh, at home and then the other one where the home team uh, tried to make up uh, that one and it worked in kind of similar ways overall it was also that on both days yeah we had the game in madrid that had all the emotions and then we had the other game that was almost uh you know it both ended in a draw we had actually quite a few draws but both of these uh were yeah maybe not so exciting but there were almost in both of them were a little upset in there and one actually did an upset yeah we are not having the semi-final that we all expected because the the yellow submarine did bayern and i couldn't be happier although now i have two bayern shirts i got the one because i expected bayern to be in the semi-final never do that again but you know it was a free shirt back there and next season they have a similar one so in that sense i'm fine but yeah, uh, I thoroughly, I, especially Tuesday, I thoroughly enjoyed. I was not necessarily happy that it went to overtime, but it was a gripping game. Uh, and there is something about Real Madrid. There is something about Real Madrid in the Champions League where they always can pull it off. Uh, one last thought that I had. If the draw would have gone differently, you know, it was an open quarterfinal draw. And we had a quarterfinal between Manchester City and Liverpool. Those two would have met four times in the space of two weeks. That would have beaten the El Clasico madness that we had um, um, yeah, uh, 11 years ago. It was uh, where, you know, we had also four Clasicos in the space of a month. This would have been four, uh, the four times the best two teams meeting um, in the space of two weeks, which would have been uh, absolute madness. And I have to say that those the FA Cup semi-final definitely had an impact also on these quarterfinal matchups. And I think going forward, it will also, uh, it, there will be an impact on that, uh, with Liverpool definitely being the happier of the two. I would say I give you my thoughts on each of the game. Bayern Munich against Villarreal. Bayern Munich in their typically, and this is why you cannot like Bayern, in their situation, yeah, we did not show up in Villarreal, but in Munich, we're gonna show, we're gonna show that we are the better team. We're gonna romp all over and, and we're gonna uh, qualify easily. And yes, while they showed a little bit more um, attacking spirit, Villarreal defended extremely well, extremely well. Bayern could not really find chances. They might have had all the control, but there were hardly any chances for Bayern by Bayern Munich. There was only, uh, in the first half, I think the only really good chance was a Musiala header, uh, where he hit, an, I think, a Raul Albiol on the head. And Raul, Raul Albiol was, was, for me, the player of, of the game. He almost got Lewandowski sent off because Lewandowski twice with a kind of an open foot stepping on Raul Albiol. The first time he got a yellow, the second time, I think because he then fell down and, and kind of faked that this was an uh, that he was also hurt. It was an inadvertent contact. Uh, I think that's why he got off because that, that was a, a second yellow. And Lewandowski probably should have been sent, sent, sent off. And I'm not saying this because I'm anti Bayern. I'm uh, even Lothar Mateus, who was in the studio, was saying Lewandowski should should, should have worked for uh, what what did it there. And I gotta say, Raúl Albiol did everything to wind Lewandowski up. And so uh, he had that coming in a way. And I also have to say that, yeah, um, Villarreal, even on their few counterattacks that they had, they always looked dangerous. They always looked dangerous. And uh, in the second half, Bayern then, I mean, first half, they tried at the beginning, uh, were stalled. Second half, Bayern then really had a period of extended pressure where they also get the equalizer through Lewandowski after Müller assist. 
was a little bit lucky because it, it took a wicked deflection where Ruli could not uh, really um, save it. And also uh, it came from a, a playing out where they really pressured Parejo, who tried twice met, tried to make a pass left to right. It was always blocked. Played it forward, it got intercepted. Um, so yeah, was not uh, very, very lucky. And then uh, again, VRL digging in deep like they already did at Juventus. Uh, however, there was a point blank range header from uh, Müller. If that one goes in, Bayern go through. I'm absolutely, absolutely certain. But then a little bit the changes I did not quite understand uh, because it, it went then all a little bit too much all out attack. And you could see that then in the count, count counter that Chukwese uh, finished. I, I think it was Pareko Moreno uh, Chukwese. The Bayern defense was not so sorted, and there, there was no because uh, it, it was. It, I, I, I think it was um, Kimmich who suddenly found himself in defense, uh, who then tried to attack uh, Moreno while the others are, pull, uh, pull, uh, are, are pulling back, and so everyone is out of position. And Chukwese, a little bit lucky with the finish, makes it one-one, and Bayern are out. Bayern, uh, uh, the most dominant team this season. I mean, they uh, had won up until the point, all but one game. Yes, they lost at Villarreal, but uh, up before the they minute, they won all the group stage games with plus nine, nine, nine goals. They eliminated Salzburg with plus six. And now they're out. And it's not even that much of a surprise because uh, they were definitely trending down. So uh, the big upset is the first thing we are talk talking about. Um, my only regret is that I've only one Villarreal jersey and they're not that easy to come by. And yeah, uh, there are some that are nicer than others and the nice ones I cannot really get it at the moment. But you know, I might do with just one. The game in Madrid, Real Madrid against Chelsea. Boy, 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 boy. I think one can easily say that for half an hour, if not 75 minutes, Chelsea was bossing Real Madrid around. They did exactly what they couldn't do in the first leg. What does Real Madrid not like? And you saw it already in the, sec in the first leg in the second half. Real Madrid likes to evade the pressure, control the pace of the, of the game and keep the pace low. If you make them run, if you hit them with intensity, Real Madrid is going to crumble. And that's exactly what happened. Also, Real Madrid had a little bit this um, um, dilemma. We have a two-goal lead from the first leg. How do we approach that one? I try to do the same as before. Yeah, it was kind of a little bit weird. Whereas Chelsea knew it's all out, out, out the attack. And already in the 15th minute, Mason Mount made it 1-0 at a time when it really only seemed a matter of time until this goal is uh, being scored. Chelsea really largely outplaying Real Madrid, uh, the oldest Real Madrid 11 that we ever saw in the Champions League. And that, I think, did not help at all. At all, because Chelsea came out with the youth. Chelsea also came, came out with yellow jerseys. And while I don't mind uh, Chelsea in yellow, this season's yellow jerseys, if that was blue instead of black, I think I would like it more. But white against yellow makes no sense whatsoever. I had a theory that because they cannot uh, order blue socks, maybe that is, but uh, from what I hear, they have been furnished with blue socks. I guess they just decided because we beat Southampton in the yellow ones, let's wear a yellow ones in Madrid as well. But uh, honestly, uh, horrible. Horrible ma ma match. White against yellow is a matchup I don't want to see. Absolutely not. Especially if you can have white against blue. Would look wonderful. Uh, second half, and uh, this... This is where I think the Bernabeu effect, effect in the end came, came in. Uh, Antonio Rüdiger makes it with a, a really nice header. 2-0 in the 51st minute. Score is level. And then just a few minutes later, uh, Marcos Alonso puts the ball in it with a wonderful shot. However, you can see that he controls it just... The ball hits the hand. That was for me the first turning point in there. The second turning point came when Tony Cross came off and Kamavinga came off because suddenly you had speed. You had speed in midfield. What was missing? You had also, because uh, as good as Cross is and as good as uh, Carl Semiro is, you definitely need a little bit more speed. Um, 
However, it did not yet turn around because two minutes later, Timo Werner makes it 3 0. Chelsea is going through. A little bit later, just a few minutes later, an enormous save by Thibaut Courtois. If that goes in, game done and dusted. Courtois saves that one. That was the next turning point. And then also, uh, although it looked a little bit uh, weird, I don't know why. Uh, Mar I think Marcelo had to come in because Fela Mendy got uh, injured. And at that moment, I thought, yeah, Real Madrid is really think, uh, throwing the towel in. However, uh, most um, cru crucially, for Casimir Rodrigo came in, another speedy guy. And just a few minutes later, Luka Modric in the, one of the sweetest passes that you'll ever see with the outside of his foot. Hits it to Rodrigo, who takes it directly out of the air. Yeah, makes it 1-3, levels the score. And a crowd that was very much whistling and on the edge of booing Real Madrid off the field got reignited again. The game then was a little bit more open. Still, Christian Pulisic should have won it right uh, at, the, at the end of stoppage time. Uh, point blank range puts it over the crossbar. It goes to overtime. And what happens in overtime? Well, whatever happens when Real Madrid is playing Benzema after a wonderful assist by Vinicius Jr. But also, most crucially, um, Kamavinga intercepts a pass, plays it to Vinicius Jr. who just knows, I just have to make the run, get past, and then I look where Benz is. And he loves, li uh, lives up and Benzema can easily head it home. The Chelsea in the last few minutes then, uh, I mean, they came then out storming. They brought on Hakim Ziyech, they brought on jo uh, Jorginho for Kovacic. For, for, for uh, Saul Niguez, of course, got booed off because he came from um, Atletico. They really brought out everyone that they could. They created also a few chances. I think Chelsea on the night was definitely the better team. On the balance of play, I think I'm just about all right with Real Madrid going uh, through on this one. However, uh, it was very, very, very much there. If Angelotti would not have brought the speed in midfield, if Courtois doesn't make this monster save, preventing the 4 0, this game is not turned to turn around. Those to me are the two key points that shifted the momentum. And then Luka Modric, that golden foot, how good is that Modric guy? Absolutely, absolutely amazing. So uh, this was, what well, I have to say, this was probably one of the best Champions League overall ties that I can remember for a while. Um, just for the, the many twists and turns in there and uh, the amount of uh, drama that it lifted up. I really thought, and uh, the, the style of play was also good. I mean, yes, there were faces where I think the coaches didn't get right, but then they corrected within the game. It was up and down. I really, really, really enjoyed that. That one, I don't think that Real Madrid will go on to win the Champions League. We'll talk about that in a sec. However, uh, just for that time, what Real Madrid did there, uh, and also uh, kudos to Chelsea for despite Tuchel saying we have no chance, but he said we have no, no chance if, if you play like this. They turned it around and they really gave a, a Real Madrid a run for their money. Atletico Madrid did one of the, the most athletic performances. Of course they dug in deep again. And what they, they were a little bit more open, especially then uh, in the second half, uh, we finally could see what Real Madrid, uh, what Atleti is capable of doing. However, what they did most is they got back to the rules. They got dirty. Down and dirty. Whatever moved, if we can an extra shove or an extra kick in, we are gonna do it. And we're gonna do it in such a way that the referee cannot really punish ourselves and the referee let the game roll also. But they got all the dirty tricks out. They tried to unnerve City. The goal was to get a red card, and that game always had a red card written all over it, although I always thought it was it was definitely more li li likely for Atletico Madrid to get that one. But they definitely, if you have a referee that uh, doesn't immediately stop it, and he did not stop it, then they are going all out. And who was their primary target? Of course, Phil Foden, who after a while already had the, tur the, the, the turbo first in white and then in matching color for the jer 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 jersey for the second half. Um, I have to say it was probably the prettiest jersey matchup of the entire um, games that we saw. I really enjoyed. I have to say the light blue pants 
for Atletico Madrid. Although the red socks looked with the light blue pants uh, with that red shirt, that is something very nice. And then the navy with the light blue. Although the jersey is not pretty, the kit actually looks really, really nice. So I absolutely enjoyed uh, that matchup. The game, yeah, what can I say? Uh, City probably should have scored in the first half. In the second half, Atletico decided to attack. Uh, they created chances and especially laid on. They had a few really good chances through Angel Correa. I think Luis Suarez, although I think they had that one, which was pretty offside, um, would have turned it around. But also, I mean, uh, Felipe, who also had uh, a, a yellow for roughing in, in the 24, lay, lay down. I think it was again Foden. He is falling down next to Foden and while falling down, he gets the extra kick in. And of course, uh, then Savage says, Foden, don't fake injury, don't fake injury. Of course, he's going to lie, lie, lie down. And a big um, bust up is happening. Everyone on the pitch, uh, I think most of them tried to actually uh, se separate the, the players. But I have had to say, with mean, the second yellow for Felipe was very well deserved. I also think a Savage should have walked at that point. Uh, that then City got so unnerved that they even couldn't get, uh, they even allowed Atleti with 10 men to get big chances, speaks of how the Simeone side actually approached this game. So um, that they really, it was first a nerf City, who are a far superior team. Atleti is not a bad team, but they are definitely the lucky team in this entire round because I think they should not have made it out of, out of the group stage to begin with. But uh, they made it up there, they made it tight, they dug in, they made it dirty, they tried to pull City to their level. And as I hear Grealish in the uh, tunnel that also was involved in something. I think the best thing that Guardiola could have done for the game, leave Grealish in the hotel. He's hot-headed. And you don't do this against his athletic side. I think here you need to keep your cool and just stay far away from all that. Let yourself get hit, move on. Don't go, uh, stoop down to their level. Uh, the other game was probably the, in one way, the most exciting, and the other way, the least exciting. Because uh, Liverpool was all, always going to win in the time, even with a clear B11. Because we are saving all our good players for the game against City on Saturday. And, you know, just if we need it, we can put on Mane and Salah, which then actually happened. Um... 21st minute, uh, Timikas, uh, corner and Konate converts. Then uh, Ramos gets it equal. I think Nunez before already had a goal taken off for just uh, uh, an offside. So uh, Benfica was playing there. However, Liverpool was overall, even with the B squad, the, the, better, the better team. When Firmino made it 2-1 and uh, then 3-1, you really thought the tie is over. However, Benfica did not give up. Jaremczuk and Darwin Nunez pulled one, uh, two, pulled goals, goes back and laid on. Nunez even thought he had made it 4-3, but it was all, again, it was a clear offside. But um, Liverpool had to be really, really careful to uh, navigate. I think they overall achieved the target. They got a little bruised eye from it, but overall, I have to say, uh, yeah. The 3-1 was probably the worst thing that could happen to Liverpool because they really let it slide at that point. And that, maybe it could have turned uh, if Benfica was just a little bit better team. But then again, if it was a better team than Benfica, I think Liverpool would have played also a different squad and played differently. So yeah, uh, going forward, I have to say uh, Liverpool definitely, the at the moment, probably the luckiest team in Europe because... You got the uh, relatively easy Befica tie, although you probably considered way more goals than you should have. Um, you could rest players in between the City clashes, where City could not. And the other reward is you have to play the Villarreal. Although the Villarreal game is not an easy one. And just Villarreal in the semifinals. That's the seventh place team from La Liga. They're not doing anything in La Liga, but in Europe, if he can prepare just for a matchup, a head-to-head -head matchup, Una Emery is really, 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 really good at that one. So yeah, semi-finals. What do we have? We start, of course, uh, with Manchester City against Real Madrid on the 26th of April. So we take a little break, then we have them back. Uh, next day, we have Liverpool at home to Villarreal. So it's all English versus Spanish. First, we have all the games in England, then we have all the games in Spain. Um, we'll talk about where there will also be an English-Spanish um, 
final or not. Uh, return leg, of course, we have Real Madrid, Man City is the last one to be decided. I think uh, the scheduling overall makes quite some sense um, because Man City against Real Madrid is the overall uh, the, be uh, the the more marquee matchup. However, I don't think that Real Madrid are matching up well against Manchester City. Uh, we had that already a few times. I think both times, uh, you know, Manchester City always can get to Real Madrid. I will. I always remember the one where. Uh, in the COVID times, uh, where just before Coco Coco -Co -Co with Man City uh, dominated Real Madrid and uh, um, won very, very, very easily over uh, Los Blancos. So, um, will be interesting. Liverpool against Vieira, of course, should be considered favorites. However, I don't think it will be as easy as many think. Uh, if you look at probabilities, and yes, I had a bug in my calculations for last week where I gave. Um, where I gave a home field, a, a systematic home field advantage to the teams in the final, which, yeah, meant that it did not look all right. Um, Liverpool at the moment are the favorites. They are 67% favorites to advance over Villarreal. Uh, and then they are even the highest rated team, so they will be a slight favorite there too. Man City against Real Madrid is much more tighter. Uh, it's kind of a 60-40 thing. Um, and then, yeah, because it is so clear, that's why... Um, uh, Villarreal and Real Madrid are almost level, uh, whereas Liverpool and Man City are, of course, the favorites to make it to the final, which I think would be a great final. I think if those two to meet, I cannot see this uh, being a boring final overall. Uh, of course, I am not necessarily in for, an, again, an all-English final, but I think we have shifted that way. Now, I have to say, so far, uh, especially from the qualifiers, it has a definite English-Spanish flair. Maybe it continues into the final. Maybe Real Madrid can pull the upset. I just, at this very moment, I don't quite see it. And I don't see Villarreal also um, doing anything against Liverpool. However, you know, injuries and whatever, we gotta see. So I would like to know your thoughts on uh, the quarterfinals and how you think it goes forward. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.